I don't consider comedy to be an art form, even though it is. Uh, you, there are so few people you can talk to about that it's music, that it's all, you hear it and you know when to speak, that it's all done, to me it's all about notes and music. Uh, they just stare at you, what? No, comedy they just think is the lowest form. You're an embarrassment. So that's other people's judgment. That's why yes. you do that? I don't know. I don't know. I never, I never feel secure in it. Do you I'm, think it's going to run out? Totally. I think every day there's not one more funny thing I can think of. Daily, I think that. But do you not think that you've got a skill? No, I think um, I'm lucky. I, I, I improvise every Wednesday night in this little nightclub, and every Wednesday night I think, well, nothing new will come tonight. Nothing. There's nothing more I can think of that's funny. And then suddenly comes, I'm so excited, along with the audience. And when you work out that material, where are you putting that? Are you putting it into your top drawer, ready for a big new show? I put it... No, I just add it in. My, I've never done an, a, sh a show and then two years later ca came back with a new show. I don't think comedy really works that way. I think of it like a piece of tapestry. And you just keep adding stitches. And it just evolves very slowly. And you may have the same theme, but the jokes are different. Do people thank you for uh, making them laugh? Uh, they, they thank me for breaking ground. I get furious because I'm not ready to go on the shelf yet. No. You know, I was doing don't. a comic relief, and six younger comedians came up and said, oh, because of you, we're here. And I thought, time to show these bitches. <laughs> and I literally went on stage... And, and just, I hate the term, destroyed the audience and didn't even come back for the bow. You know, it was like, okay, <laughs> your turn. That's how you do yeah, it. Yeah, don't you tell me thank you. <laughs> Learn. <laughs> but do, do uh, punters, do they thank you? Yes, they'll, but they say wonderful. I'll tell you what the joy of it is, besides the joy of the audience and all that. The joy is you're walking down the street and someone will come up and say, you're the first one that made me laugh since my mother's death. That's a gift from them to me, not from me to... Um, after 9-11, and I was right back in the saddle, immediately doing terrorist jokes. I mean, not waiting, not skipping a beat, thinking of who I would have liked to have been in the tower if I had known it was going to happen, couldn't stop it. And I got a little flat for that, but there were a few people I would have said, can you meet me for breakfast? Um... So people would come up to me and say, you're the first person who has made me laugh since this. And that was very important. I thought that was my little contribution. Do you seek out the company of funny people? Uh, I'm in nobody's circle. And so I don't, I don't have those wonderful dinners with Woody. You know what I mean? Uh, I've never been asked by Jay. <laughs> No, I'm not in the, that group at all. And it makes me very sad, because I think it would be wonderful to sit and, and uh, talk, as you and I have been doing, to talk about something that very few people understand. Do, do you think you give signals, then, that, that, well, I'm that very they understand? I'm very competitive. And uh, there are a lot of funny ladies that I say, oh, isn't that wonderful? She got that, did she? <laughs> Uh, so I'm sure they feel that. Are you I'm, jealous, then, of other good performers? Oh, I am totally jealous. I am jealous of that little slut Paris Hilton. Why? I just... I'm very... Not jealous. I'm very competitive. And I think that's what's kept me going. Yeah. I'm not gracious. Oh, give it to her. I don't think so. You're going to call her? You know she's got the clap, but good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Are yes. you secretly glad there aren't more female comedians, then? I'm beyond glad there are more <laughs> female comedians. I suspected that. Yes. No, 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 no. They're just enough, and as they die, they die. <laughs> <laughs> there is no reason to Have replace... You... <laughs> is it more difficult in this country at the moment to be outspoken about what you really think? Uh, I think in this country I get... I get audiences that go, oh, that my false eyelashes are pulled in, in the suction. Yes, we're a very politically correct country. And the only thing that's saving me is my age, because I don't care. 
And I come out and I say to them, I've been up, I've been down, I've been fired, I've been hired, I've been broke, I've been this. What are you going to do to me? You're not going to like me? I don't give a damn. What can you do to me? You can't. So this is what I think. What about comedy and age? Do you think there's a reason that you should ever stop? If Adolf Hitler came back with six good minutes, we'd be finding <laughs> reasons to put him on. You know what I mean? Oh, he didn't really mean it. Or he was bipolar. You know, they'd find a reason. <laughs> so, uh... ADHD. Yeah, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a whole other side. Now there's a medication. A doll. A doll. His doctor's Jewish, you know. Uh, yeah, they always <laughs> said... But um, I think um, as long as you look good, that they're not upset that you're physically going to fall over and die on them. Because, you know, you do get that... Towards the end, people do get like that little birdie thing. Uh, I think they don't care what you look like if you're funny. So do you think there's a relationship between comedy and beauty, then? I think not so much with the women, because I've never seen a really beautiful girl say, I want to be a comedian. I'm either going to be a sex goddess or a comedian. You know, so that doesn't happen. But, you know, the really good male comics in repose are very good-looking. What about the women, though? What's the deal? Girls don't tend to be funny that are very, very pretty. OK. I think, you do, I think you also have to hone it in a way. And I think if everything is coming to you and you've woken up and you're 12 years old with long, gorgeous legs and perfect breasts and a fabulous look and men are falling to feet, you don't have to do anything. It's the same principle they say great-looking people are lousy in bed. Because they don't have to do so anything. I think that's a fact. You've never heard... Oh, I hope it is. <laughs> yeah, I hope it is too. <laughs> Pray it is. But do you think... Well, I, I think I feel that when people are confident, they are beautiful. And when they are confident and funny, you can't top that when it comes to beauty. Well, you're more secure than I am. I think you can not top beauty as long as you've got a great plastic surgeon. I think... I know beauty is inside, all that, right, right, right. But nobody ever asked... Uh, Margaret Thatcher to dance ahead of Julia Roberts. If they were both standing there, I think Julia would be asked to tango first. But are you still waiting to be asked to dance then, Joan? I am still waiting to be asked to dance. I, I'm going to ask you to dance in a oh. minute. We are gonna, so going to dance before we finish <laughs> this. So it's an interesting thing. You talk about plastic surgery in your show. So you're yes. prepared to oh, yes. mock yourself. Oh, I have to. Yeah. Why do you have to? Uh, because uh, I want them to know I don't think I'm wonderful. I don't think I'm better than they are. Uh, part of comedy is saying I am you and you are me, and we're all feeling the same thing. And I think that by saying I've tried to make myself look better, and so should you, takes the onus away. OK. Do you think it keeps people away a little bit? Do you think, in other words, that you are allowing your vulnerability to be on view? I think if you're not vulnerable, they're not going to laugh at what I want them to laugh at. A lot of my comedy, they have to be my friend to laugh. And so that's all part of saying, it's not so wonderful for me either. And then we all can laugh together. That's a lot of layers, isn't it? Yeah. You're kind of saying... Too many. <laughs> I've done this and I've done this. Yeah. So that... And I'm trying. Yeah. And I'm trying to be good in bed, but yeah. it's not working. And I'm trying for this and it's not working. And, and then it's fine. And once they know it's happening in my life, I then can take them into other... We can move out. OK. And we can really all explore a little more. How do you match that with the cruelty? But it isn't cruel. It's... Uh, if you really look, it's, it's much more observational. Because um, I, I always think back, what have I said that's cruel? And I really... I can't think of one single line. I think there's something about you, and I don't know what it is, that people love so much that they forgive you these moments that would be cruel out of the mouth of anybody else. But they're also true. I was the first one to say Elizabeth Taylor was fat. I remember that. I do too. I so clearly remember it. I do too. I remember you telling that joke about her standing in front of the microwave and saying, Harry! Harry. They pierced her ears, gravy came out. She put on a yellow uh, raincoat. Twelve school children tried to board her. Uh, I mean, just on and on and on and but on. But how did you think Elizabeth Taylor might feel about that? I actually was worried. But, but, but first of all, let's back up and say, everybody was doing Elizabeth Taylor jokes. I was the only one that got noticed for it, and I always like to think maybe because mine were funnier. 
But uh, when it was reaching the point that it was 